when you were doing your work, especially because it was focused on kids, right? Like at the UN, known and seen different studies about, you know, depression rates spiking, especially since like the mid, early mid 2000s, and even more and more perpetually each and every year. And it has, a, there's a lot of factors that come into that. Why is that such a big issue, especially for younger generations? This idea of like, okay, we need attention to these issues going on and not really feeling happy with many things. So for me, the big, um, the big thing would be technology and social media. Uh, I was very lucky to grow up without social media. My, I created my Facebook account in my last year of undergrad. So I was not in this perpetual cycle of fearing, comparing myself to others and, and everything that I've read on Gen Z and, and is basically and, and on happiness in children and is this huge sense of loneliness that is caused from overconnection to their phones. Um, and so that would be the concerning younger people, but actually in all of us, people are scrolling through life, literally, uh, rather than living their life. And we're all guilty of it. I have these scrolling moments and I'm like, where did my life go for the last half an hour? But then sometimes you have really valuable social media content. It depends what you're consuming. If that content is improving your life, which I focus on that kind of content, then it is going to enrich you. However, for younger people in particular, social media has, has caused, you know, already in from a happiness science perspective, comparing ourselves to others is already one way of instantly being unhappy. Um, so if we compare ourselves to others in terms of appearance, in terms of possessions, um, job title, status, um, income, then this is really a recipe for, for unhappiness. And unfortunately, social media is only providing a platform for that sometimes, especially in younger kids that always comparing what they look like compared to others and, and unrealistic expectations on, on body types, for instance, leading to um, eating disorders. Um, in adults as well, I mean, I would say generally in the workplace, um, the pace of information is so fast that people, what I see as something really terrifying is this urgency culture of having to be available all the time. Every email that pings in your inbox, you feel like you need to respond to it immediately when actually it is just not sustainable and you're not going to do your best work if you're rushing to reply to everything. So I would definitely bring it down to technology and social media, which can also are also a really big source for good. But that would be the difference that I would see. That's huge. And I completely concur with everything you're saying there, especially I think more than anything, the like you said as well, like the saturation and the immediacy of everything. Like myself, like you growing up, my childhood in the 90s, like the internet and social media was not even a thing until college, you know? So having the ability to be outside all the time and actually talk to the person in his, to his or her human body was a big deal, you know? So, you know, now if you don't get a reply right away about something, it's like, okay, I'm going to break up with that person or that person is not part of my life anymore. You know, it's just, it's hard to put it into words, but it's definitely not the health, healthiest thing in the world. It's a tool, like you're saying, if you're using for the right reasons and for certain ways to advance, like what we do, essentially getting messages out, sharing, et cetera, you know, for a certain period of time throughout the day, that's good. I'm mean, nine hours straight. That's another thing, right? And that could have other sort of adverse kind of issues I can imagine later on. Thank you.